Please welcome Brother Umar Armar speak on the topic Let's revive our Iman. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam. Ala Rasulillah. Wa ala ali wa sahabi ajma'in. Amba abad. Audhu billahi min shaitan rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa yatafakkaruna. في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا ربي شالي صدري ويسر لي أمري وهل أقدة من لساني يفقه قولي My respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God, be on all of you. The topic of my talk is, Let's Revive Our Iman. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said in an authentic hadith, Inna al-Imana la yakhlaqu fi jawfi ahadikum. كما يقلقس صوب فسأل الله تعالى أن يجدد الإيمان في قلوبكم. Verily, Iman gets so, just like the new cloth becomes shabby. So ask Allah to help you and ask Allah to renew your Iman. And based on this hadith, we plead to Almighty Allah. O Allah, we beg you. O Allah. We ask you by your divine names and attributes to strengthen our Iman. Ameen. Iman, my dear brothers and sisters, is the most important thing in our life. It is the most precious thing, most valuable thing. And a sensible person, when he owns something valuable, where does he keep it? Outside the house? On the road? On the pavement, where do you keep it? Beside the locker or maybe in the bag? Because it is so valuable. The most valuable thing in your life is Iman. And you must protect this Iman from the thieves. Who are the thieves? That they are going to steal your Iman. Who is the biggest thief? Satan is the biggest thief. And then the followers of Satan. Who work round the clock to steal the seaman, the most valuable thing in the life of human being. That's why the Sahabas were very concerned and very worried about their iman, and they would tell each other, "Dana Norman Sa." They would tell each other, "Let us sit down for one hour and renew our iman." Do we do that? No. Do we ask each other, Oh brother, how's your Iman? No, we don't ask each other, How's your Iman brother? How's your Iman sister? No, that's not in our life. And then, we start to dream. We want Firdaus Alala. We want to be established on earth. And there's no Iman. Now let us see what is the definition of Iman. The definition of Iman consists of three components. نُطْقُمْ بِاللِّسَانِ Utterance upon the tongue وَتَزْدِيقُمْ بِالْجَنَانِ And conviction in the heart The belief something in the heart Firmly So that's the conviction So that's the second component وَعَمَالُمْ بِالْجَوَارِ وَالْأَرْكَانِ And actions by the limbs Like Salah You have to get up and pray Hajj You have to go to Makkah Shia you have to stop from eating and drinking. So these are the actions by the limbs. So Iman is equal to utterance multiplied by conviction multiplied by action. The product is Iman. The utterance is fixed or variable. Is it constant or variable? It is variable. So whatever you utter is not fixed. So that's why in Ramadan, because of the zikr, because of the istighfar, because of the reading of Quran, you feel 
MashaAllah, your Iman is shooting up. It is rising. Why? Because now one element of Iman has increased. So the product will increase. Is this clear? Now take the second. The conviction, the aqidah. Is it fixed? Is it fixed or variable? It is fixed and variable. How? It is fixed in the sense that you believe in the angels. So it's not that one day you believe in the angels, other day you'll say, I don't believe in the angels. Right? It is fixed. But it is variable that the more evidence you learn about the deen, the stronger the conviction. So it is variable from that perspective. The more knowledge you get, the stronger that knot becomes. So now we know, utter increases, conviction increases, and also action increases. One who prays only five prayers is easy man, like one who prays the five prayers, and the nafil prayers, and the tajwid prayers. What do you think? Same or different? Different. That's why every Muslim feels that in Ramadan his iman increases. Because his salah, his actions have increased. So now how can we strengthen our iman to reinforce this iman? Make it strong in our hearts. Number one, my dear brothers and sisters, is the learning. You have to learn your deen. Nowadays, in the Muslims, we have something called religious illiteracy. The Muslims are illiterate about their deen. Though they are PhD holders, the title doctor, but they don't know about their deen. So it is high time for us to learn our deen. Without learning Islam, without learning the deen, your Iman will become weak. Second thing, This book, the Quran, Allah revealed it for the Hidayah, for us to contemplate, to ponder, to reflect. So it's not that you'll take the Quran and read it in a parrot fashion without knowing its meaning. No, get a translation of the Quran in your mother tongue so you know when you are reading what you are reading. Because this book, the Quran, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen the iman. The third thing that will strengthen your iman is to see the greatness of Allah. Don't you see the greatness of Allah around you? Don't you see yourself? Don't you see the universe around you? Everything is in order. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us to reflect. Allah says in Surah al imran chapter number 3, verse number 191. The verse which I recited in the beginning of my talk. Allah says, وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا They ponder and reflect upon the creation of Allah. Oh Allah, for sure, you didn't create this just for nothing. No, there must be a purpose. See the creation around you that calls you to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a matter of fact, it builds your Iman. Also the Zikr. Zikr is the most important thing. Zikr is to the heart, just like water is to the plant. The plant, without water, what will happen to it? It will die. Same thing, your heart, no Zikr, the heart will die. So always keep doing Zikr. To strengthen your Iman, don't lose Zikr at all. Also, we should not waste time. Time is life. What are we doing? Wasting time for hours and hours in front of the television? What will you answer Allah when He'll ask you, how did you spend your life? Watching television? Watching cricket? That's the answer you're going to give Allah? Time is your life and He's going to ask you about it. Inshallah from now, my dear brothers and sisters, we should make a niyah that, oh Allah, Help us from now, we'll not waste time. Inshallah, we'll benefit from every single minute. Inshallah. With this, I would like to conclude my talk. 
by quoting a surah from the Quran, Surah Al As, chapter 103, verse number 123. Wal Asr, Inna al Insan la fiqus, Inna al Ladina Amanu wa Amru Salihati, Tawasau bil Hakki wa Tawasau bil Sab. By the token of time, verily man is a loss, except those who believe and do righteous deeds, and exhort people to truth, and exhort people to patience and perseverance. Wa akhru da'wana, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.